cost us probably $7 million to actually put the event on. It removed them from any sort of liability, which was something that I had to stomach. The party's over. Now there's the fallout for people charged in the wake of the New Year's Eve riot. I'm obviously one of the major shareholders, and I, and I don't want to sell. It's definitely created friction between us. At the end of 2014, we had those, yeah, the, the issues down at BW campgrounds. Bottles started flying, fights started occurring, and arrests were made. <laughs> it was blowing out of control a little bit. It probably went for about no more than sort of half an hour. We just had this crowd of individuals that decided to um, push a couple of fences down and and then they decided to push some more fences down. And once they had pushed all the fences down, they were like, OK, what else are we going to do now? And you could say it was always going to happen. Um, I think that the culture that had developed down at the campground was slightly unbecoming for the kind of you know, vision we had for Rhythm and Vines. When you have 10,000 kids there drinking, oh, yeah! something like that is going to happen. On the back of that, then, that, that gave you know, the police and, and, and the local council a very, very large stick to, to, to beat us up with. We, we were gutted. It was um, you know, some of our best memories, really, just you know, from being you know, 21 years of age right through, uh, you know, running, running that for, uh, the campgrounds here for 12 years. BW is primo. BW is awesome! Yeah, we were still really, especially Andrew, was still really keen to keep BW going. And I didn't. I, I thought the only way Rhythm and Vines is going to survive is if BW doesn't exist anymore and we can join it all together, put all the camping out here. Um, it brought millions in. And just, you know, I think we were just sad that uh, that's been all taken away from us from, you know, 15, you know, rep bags. Don't be a dickhead. Hey, don't be a dickhead. Don't be a dickhead. Uh, I think the brand was tarnished. The authorities wouldn't let the drinking culture continue at the beach. That meant that B-Dub was no more. And this is the Rowdy Patrol signing out. It was soon apparent that B-Dub, having been successful on the back of Rhythm and Vines um, and the resources they'd been able to build over the years, were in a position to loan us the money. It came at a cost. Um, it came with conditions around repayment. They were to be paid before other creditors. It removed them from any sort of liability, which was something that I had to stomach. I mean, I think at that point, we were you know, extremely desperate. We actually didn't. I think we really had a choice, and I think you know, the lenders kind of knew the position we were in. So yeah, it was it was yeah it wasn't yeah it wasn't the most favourable terms that to, to borrow money on, but it it, it 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 was what it was. No, I don't think she'd got preferential rates. I um, I guess uh, the the interest rate you put up on a deal arrangement um, is um, subject to someone saying yes. Well, we did it six or seven years in a row. We we're bankrolling it. And it's not like we were sitting there with money wanting to lend and like sharking. It's like we don't want to do this and we're doing this every year. And we'd say, next year you've got to find someone else. You have a whole year to find someone. They don't find someone that comes back to us. I think if, if it wasn't for us making those decisions at the time and loaning that money, um, you know, we probably wouldn't be standing here today. Everyone's got their own beef, but... Um... Some have got more out of it than others, so. Uh -uh, uh -uh.
foot. Strip it all back, this the kind of shit you don't see. Young sis, yeah, but I'm looking for the trophy and I'll be making moves. Conceptually and creatively, Kyle, Karen and I came up with a new model for the festival with on-site camping, limited BYO, um, a new music direction and create a sustainable and smaller festival. And that's maybe the key to it is, is, is maybe for the first time we probably fully understand how the business <laughs> operates. It's probably a bit worrying and it's taken us, or it's taken the event, you know, 13 years to, <laughs> to figure out how to make money. There's a reason we're back for our four years. Yeah. We get so and excited. there's a reason we'll be back for our fifth year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really want to spend New Year's Eve anywhere else if I can. Um, it's definitely my favorite spot, um, for sure. I'll be right at the front, bro. Yeah, I can imagine. Thank you. We started talking to Live Nation maybe a couple of years ago. Globally, they're looking to expand. They want, they want a festival in New Zealand. Um, if it's not us, it'll be somebody else, or it'll be something they'll create themselves and competing with Live Nation sitting here in Gisborne, um, six hours away from you know, a major population centre is, yeah. It's a damn if you do and damn if you don't. The opportunity to work with a renowned international promoter such as Live Nation will provide access to talent, um, you know, leading event technology, um, and be working at a world-class level. They do own the artists, they, they do own the ticketing companies, they do own all the venues, and it's actually quite a significant threat for independent festivals for survival long term, because, you know, if you want to hold an artist on a, on a main stage, how do you get them without going through their channels? You know, I mean, it's great to be an independent festival um, up there. They're coming uh, almost an extinct species around the world at the moment as the, the music industry has been corporatized. So you either got to, you know, you got to swim with them or, or kind of swim against them, really. I'm, I'm, I'm against it, and I, I'm obviously one of the major shareholders, um, and, I, and I don't want to um, sell. You know, as much as uh, it will give us sustainability, um, it will potentially reduce our creative input, and, and a lot of profits will be going offshore. Um, and it might be very really beneficial for, for particular shareholders in the company. Thanks sustainability, and I know that there'll be a future for the festival and I'll have a share of that. And it's taken a while to get to this point, but I think the Live Nation deal will provide some security around my personal situation and the festival going forward. At the end of the day, it's sort of like, well, okay, maybe I won't be a major shareholder in the company anymore. But, you know, it's, it's not about me, it's about the community and it's about the um, customers all having those enjoyable experiences into the future, which is more important. It's hard to believe it's been 15 years and it's been such a roller coaster. But we've always been pretty amicable and everyone's got the same sort of passion for the festival and the same drive for it. It's just like a husband and wife relationship, you know, you have your good days and your bad days, you know, I think you're hugging each other and you're high-fiving each other and, and then you're not. It can be an up and down like a yo-yo. I don't think there's many businesses around that you know, can have a perfect streak of a relationship. They've done very well really, and, and I don't think there's any other festival in New Zealand that's lasted as long. And that says it all. They wouldn't still be in the game if they hadn't improved. I was just walking around yesterday and I was just like, man, this is, this is just the best thing in New Zealand. There's just nothing that even comes close to it. Yeah, this will be a good year for us financially. We're, we're well back in the game, which is, I think, is probably the most, probably the most satisfying thing that we actually, you know, we haven't failed and we haven't let this magnificent brand die because we went, oh, bugger it, we couldn't, we couldn't be arsed.
created a monster out here and it's, it, it is a, something that I hope can continue for the next 20 years and uh, um, how much bigger can this monster actually go? It's taken a lot of courage at times to stick with it, um, but what else is worth fighting for really? We're 15 years deep, you know, how far can we go? Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.